I'm not the last wife. I'm the first wife. I'm not the last wife. I'm the second wife. I'm not the last wife. I'm the third wife. I'm not the last wife. I'm the fourth wife. I'm the last wife, I'm the fifth wife. I'm the last wife, and this is our king, king. And, and this, this is, is our husband. husband. Yay! And this is the house of Judah. My wife's been amazing. Religion is how we're living. All of them get my back. All of them submissive They're all about sisterhood and family Our family number 244 And they won't be jealous if I get another wife Together everyone achieves more Matter of fact, she says she feeling me We well, gotta be down with polygyny It's just me and my kids And all of their moms Ain't got no problems or no drama It's all love in the house of Judah Shalom, shalom. Ani Yehuda Hayorah. Hello, hello. I'm Yehuda, the shooter. We're going to be going over, um, matter of fact, let me tell you here. Habisora Hakidosha Alpi Matai Perek Yod Tate Basuk Bait. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 10, 9, verse 2. 10, 9 is what you know is 19. So we're going to be going over chapter 19, verse 2. All right, so it just put 10 and 9. I mean, uh, 10 and uh, 9. Why? Because the letter Yod, matter of fact, let me put it here. These letters here, Yod and Tate, is 19. So we'll put that together. Okay, so that being said, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to make a few announcements before we go ahead and get started, ladies and gents. Let me go ahead and um, stop sharing and reshare real quick. Okay, so, oh, sorry about that. Uh, let me pull it up. Where are you? Oh. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, if you have never been to my channel, definitely go ahead, like, share, subscribe at youtube.com slash Judah the Shooter. Um, I have been putting out uh, more and more videos recently. Um, such as the last few videos as you see over here uh, The polygyny debate um, is biblical polygyny is sin uh, People had ambushed me um, And um, obviously they believed that it was a sin And it went down in that video ladies and gentlemen um, If you look at this one here is biblical polygyny is sin There's another one debate um, Or dialogue between me and a guy by the name of Base Cat um, who actually is associated with the people that ambushed me as well um, Then I just did another video a little bit of a heated discussion uh, It's called is biblical polygyny and sin a heated debate Definitely check that one out um, Another one I did down here on the second row down here Judah the shooter versus uh, Black Jesus minister we had a bit of a polygyny discussion uh, He is one who believed that having more than one wife is against the Bible um, So definitely check those out ladies and gentlemen uh, I do have an, another announcement to make. Um, as you know, well, some of you may have known, November the 13th was supposed to be the release of my second book. Um, well, sorry, my technically my fourth book, but it's a two part series. Um, the first one is called um, here. Let me show you real quick. It's biblical polygyny and sin. You see how thick this book is. All right, book two is definitely expected to be about the same size or maybe just a little bit smaller all right so um definitely uh you see how thick this is here boom it's biblical religion is sin book volume one uh definitely get this book ladies and gentlemen let me go ahead and reshare my screen that being said book two which is obviously volume two was supposed to be set to be released around uh the 13th i pushed it back and uh because i wanted to add some more things to it as well 
and um i even reached out to a few people and asked them if they wanted me to address certain topics or certain things in this book uh i.e what people have been saying and you like me address it i'll definitely address it now a lot of people who have um who have read book one of this book say like wow like you really really outdid yourself in book one and um i've been getting questions like man like how much more can you bring out well you're definitely about to find out because today i have good news i'm going to give you a little snippet of what you will learn in book two um this would not be the entire book of course but just one of the things that you will learn dealing with um some of the false doctrine that people teach but uh so yeah volume two is definitely coming ladies and gentlemen um so yeah another thing um these books can be found at propolybook.com well book two can be found there once it come out as well but book one is there now so again you have this biblical religion and sin volume one uh which is already available at propolybook.com and then you have is biblical religion and sin volume two um which is set to be released um sometime this month or maybe next month so definitely uh be on the lookout because what you're about to learn today will um be featured in book two ladies and gentlemen not one all right so straw man fallacy um this is something that is often brought up when dealing with the topic of polygyny because when you talk about polygyny which is the practice of having more than one wife not to be confused with polygamy but when you talk about polygyny people bring up straw man arguments for one they want to try to find something negative in it or they'll try to create arguments that you're not even making and a straw man fallacy or a straw man argument is of course a ignore the real argument b they will create a pretend argument three they would um defeat the pretend argument four claim victory over the real argument and then fifth would be they would be doing a victory dance ladies and gentlemen okay so that being said ladies and gentlemen um i'm going to give you a preview of what you're going to learn in book one all right um something i want to read first now what you're about to learn let me uh turn my uh, camera on really quick what you're about to learn ladies and gentlemen this is not the entire thing in the chapter. I'm going to give you a small overview of what you're going to learn in order to get the extended version of what you're hearing today. You must get is biblical polygyny and sin volume two, which is set to be released within a month's time. I'll say that. But until then, definitely get volume one, propolybook.com. Now, that being said, um, I'm going to be very selective what I read in here. And when I say read in here, meaning things that you will learn in my book. So let me go ahead and pull it up really quick. All right. I'm purposely blocking this because um, remember, you don't have access to book two yet. In fact, nobody does. So um. I have a part of my book here it's toward the end of book two and i have matthew 19 mistranslation blasphemy from shim told like i'm asking a question is this blasphemy from shim told or blasphemy from the hebrew new testament and you'll find out why i'm saying that now matter of fact before i do there's something else i want to bring out just one more thing really quick okay let me turn my camera back on let me go ahead and share my screen. Now, if you have watched the, the debate between me and Basecat, or if you saw this video over here, it's Biblical Polygyny and Sin, Volume 1, you learned that they always bring up Matthew 19. All right. Um, that being said, Matthew 19 and 3, it says, I'm starting two, And great multitudes followed him and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came to him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, 
Have you not read that which he made them at the beginning, made them male and female, and said for this cause or reason, shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they, and they twain shall be one flesh? Wherefore there are no more twain but one flesh, where therefore God have joined together, let not man part asunder. They answered and said unto him, Why did Moses then command to give, uh, to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? And he said unto them, Moses, because the hardness of your heart suffered you, allowed you to put away your wife. But from the beginning it was not so. And I said unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, except to be for fornication, and shall marry another, commit adultery, and whosoever marries her which is put away, do have commit adultery. The disciples said unto him, If the case be, I mean, if the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good or better to marry. And he said unto them, All men cannot receive the same. Say, meaning except they to whom it is given. It says, For there are some eunuchs which are born of their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which are made eunuchs of men, and there are some eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. So the main topic we have here is, is dealing with concerning divorce, and then it goes into a whole other topic dealing with eunuchs and um, not being better than marry, of course. Now, the reason why I decide to read that is because there are some people in the anti-poly community will say that this here is a mistranslation. And if you go into the Hebrew New Testament, you are going to see something different, ladies and gentlemen. So, that being said, I'm going to give you a little snippet of what I have in my book, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. This section right here so far says uh, Matthew 19 mistranslation blasphemy from Shem told with question marks. And this is what I said. Let me take a sip of my uh, juice real quick. All right. It says there's something that men in anti polygyny community been misusing to mislead people away from the truth. Since we all know that Matthew 19 uh, verses 3 through 9 and Mark chapter 10 verses 1 to 12 is speaking about divorce and says nothing about polygyny being a sin or nothing that will show that a man is banned from having more than one wife. What they do is they lie and deceive people into believing that the Hebrew Matthew of the New Testament shows that you can't have more than one wife. They say you must get Shem Tob's New Testament in Hebrew and you will read something that your King James Version don't express. This is what they said. I mean, this is what is said by them and they will give you this here. We're going to slow roast this doctrine. So get ready because we are about to eat. Now, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you exactly what they all pull up really quick let me share my screen again One second here we go this here ladies and gentlemen okay so um the part that they're reading here is uh verse two um it says well, first off, you see here, uh, Iesus or Iesus teaching concerning marriage, the blessing of children. All right. And you'll learn more about this later. So just be patient. But I have to get through this, ladies and gentlemen, so that you can understand. Now, remember, the extended version will be in my book, which can be found at propolybook.com. OK, so verse two, it says the Pharisees also came to him, tempting him and saying unto him. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Like, remember, we just read that in Matthew 19. Keep in mind, what we're seeing here is not the Bible. All right? But anyway, you'll learn later. Verse 3. And he answered, said unto, uh, to them, In some nations, one man have many wives, and putting away whom he will for a just cause. Now, remember, we did not just read that in Matthew 19. We didn't read this. Stay tuned. It says, and in some a woman have many husbands and put it away whom she will for a just cause. And in others, meaning other nations, 
One man is joined to one woman in mutual love. And this is the first and the better way. The first and the better way. Verse 4. For have you not read that God was made them at the beginning, made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave or unite to his wife or her husband? And they twain shall be one flesh. Well, therefore, um, they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God have joined together, let not man part asunder. Verse 6. They said unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement? And he said unto them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives, even as he permitted you to eat flesh for many causes. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife except to be for a just cause and shall marry another in her place committed adultery. His disciples said unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. So as you see that a lot of this is in the King James Version Bible. And some of this is not. And I'm sure you've already caught parts that are not in the King James Version of the Bible. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, when you seen the part where it said here in verse 3, it says, And he answered and said unto them in some nations, one of many wives, and put it away whom he will for a just cause. And in some, a woman have many husbands, and put it away whom she will for a just cause. And the others, one man is joined to one woman in mutual love. And this is the first and the better way. Hmm. Find is interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Now, remember, to get the extended version, you have to get the book. You have to get the book. So, although there is a Hebrew version of Matthew, ladies and gentlemen, which I will discuss more shortly. I need you to first understand that what you just read a few moments ago and what you see right now here on the screen was never written by Matthew himself. The anti-polygenic community knows this. However, they still intend to deceive the people into believing that it was written by Matthew in the Hebrew version of the New Testament. They will tell you to read this. And they would say such things such as, well, Matthew chapter 19, verse 2 through 4 was a mistranslation. And if you go into the Hebrew version, or if you go into Shem Tob's version of the Hebrew New Testament, in Matthew the 19th chapter, you will see the part where it says, one man is joined to one woman in mutual love, and this is the original and perfect way of the Lord, or the better way they also say if you go into george howard version of the new testament they say you will see this ladies and gentlemen this is what they say this is what they say and just so you know I'll show you something real quick that this is actually in a text but is it in the hebrew version oh no so if we see here, there we go. Um, boom. See that? That's two and three. See that, ladies and gentlemen? And verses two and three, you can see it right there. All right. Now remember to get the extended version. You must get the book, ladies and gentlemen. You must get the book. So, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to get back to it. So, the people in the Antipoly community, their goal is to persuade you into thinking that Matthew itself was a mistranslation of the book. They will send you the passage in English, but the downside to this is they never seem to actually pull up a Hebrew version of the New Testament and actually show you and read the verses word for word in the translation. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen, today you are in luck because we're going to do just that. And you also will be able to see 
the exact spot, ladies and gentlemen, where these people in the anti poly community is getting this misinformation from. Then you will be able to keep up with them doing this type of conversation that they're speaking about concerning the so called mysterious translation. Hmm. And you will know exactly how to expose that lie that they're spreading because many people in the anti polygyny community will be preying on your ignorance. And they will be hoping that you have no biblical Hebraic knowledge. What I'm about to share with you is going to literally scare them away from you when it comes to this topic. When they bring this false doctrine up. Now, look. When y'all dealing with them, look, don't always give away your position. Catch them up in a lie. Allow them to dig themselves a hole. Allow them to pull this verse up. Allow them to do it. And just simply ask them about it. And allow them to dig themselves a hole. Don't always show your cards when dealing with them because... What they would do is eventually, of course, they're going to hang themselves and they're going to be so quick to debate on this topic. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to this topic right here, dealing with Matthew 19, you're most definitely going to have the upper hand. Why? Because you're going to know and understand that what they're talking about is not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. At all. Now, um... What did I want to show? Um, it was something else I want to pull up. Oh, yeah. Proverbs 25, verse 8. So what it says, it says. Go not forth hastily to strive. So don't be so quick to strive, to argue, to debate. It tells you why right here. Lest you know not what to do in the end thereof. When your neighbor have put you to shame. So don't be so quick to go ahead and argue with people because you don't know how it's going to end for you. So this is what's going to happen to them. As soon as you allow them to dig themselves a deeper hole, as they tell you in this so-called Matthew 19 chapter about the part where it says one man is joined to one woman in mutual love. And this is the original uh, and perfect way of the Lord. When they tell you that it's in the Hebrew Matthew They're not going to expect you To have a comeback of any kind They're not going to be expecting it ladies and gentlemen But ask them If they can actually read Hebrew Ask them that And if they say yes Then pull it up And ask them to read it to you And to show you what each word means And how these words sound then ask them to show you the same passage in the Hebrew New Testament that they have, that they have, that they actually have in their possession. Not one online, but one that they actually have. Not English. But show you in the Hebrew text. Tell them that they can show it in any Hebrew version of the New Testament if they choose to do so. Tell them show at least in one, more than one version of the new testament most likely they will figure out um a way how they uh get the attention off of the conversation that you challenge them to do so when you ask them that question so do expect them to change the topic or maybe even call you names or ridicule you or of course expect them to ignore you most will not admit that they are getting that false doctrine from a book that you just sent me with that you see that is in existence it's not the Bible. It was never written by Matthew himself or any of the disciples. This is what they most likely will not share with you. They want you to believe that this false gospel was written in the first century AD. They want you to believe that this is an old text and it's not. What they will most likely not tell you is that the information that they have just given you on that fake passage from so-called Matthew 19, 2-6 is in another book. And this book is known as... Hmm, do I want to tell you all or do I want to wait for you to get the... Uh, 
Hmm. What I may do is I may. Yeah, I may reveal it in the video or you might just have to get is biblical polygyny the sin volume two and learn that in the extended version. So for now, we're just going to keep it unnamed because in the book, you're going to learn so much about it. Why this book is blasphemy and why this book should not be read or not be trusted. Okay. Uh, I think I'll start here. Okay. Now, before going into the Hebrew version of Matthew, please note that the notes that are uh, left from the works of Shem Tov, aka Shem Tov, and even people such as George Howard, who, of course, um, well, you just saw that book, of course. Um, I'm gonna skip that part. Um, remember, this is this is just. Um, a summary of what you'll learn in book two but you will get the answer to what we just mentioned in here but you have to in order to get the full extent again you have to get the extended version so what we'll do is we'll do a side-by-side -side translation today of the hebrew and we will translate them both into english and you'll see if you and i come up with the same conclusion as they do many of them will say in the matthew 19 you don't see that right so that being said in this book the hebrew gospel of matthew all right what i'm about to show you you'll see hebrew on one side and the english version on the other side will also be important because it backs up the fact that you will soon learn about this fake passage that i had just shown you you will learn uh this fake passage of the uh gospel of the Hebrew Matthew Alright Now what many of you may not know Is that when you get the book You will see Where uh, George actually put Shem Tov's work In the book And um, I don't think I'm going to share that either I don't think I'm going to share that either Alright Hebrew Gospel of Matthew Ladies and gents uh, this is the extended version as you see here, ladies and gentlemen. And as you see even down here, uh, it even referenced Shem Tov. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can uh, zoom in some more down here, ladies and gents. Okay, so uh, right here it says an interesting and significant play on words. See pages 197 200 occurs in line 6 and 5 at the bottom of this leaf. You see the word uh, Hamam Lachim, which is the word for kings, and Melachi, um, which is my messenger, like uh, Malachi, if you will. Of interest also the occurrence of one of Shem Tob's uh, polemic notes, which begins with the third word from the uh, from the right of the last line of the uh, simple Lee. Now, look, one thing you'll like about what we're going to go into when they make these claims. Like, well, if there's any changes uh, left in what we call the New Testament, notes was left. I don't know if you know that. So we can go and see the before and the after. It just disappeared. So those who are making these claims, we're going to find out if the lion. All right. We're going to find out the lion. Um, here. Let me uh, zoom out real quick. We got the Matthew. Uh, as you see right here, Shem Tob. Oh, sorry about that. Right here. You can see it right here. Boom. And it'll tell you the Hebrew text and the English translation. So Shem Tob's work is between pages 1 and 151. So we can see that, ladies and gentlemen. See that? We can definitely see that. Um. Um. Do I want to do this here? Uh, I'll read this part here. It says, let me zoom in for you. All right, it says, part one of the present volume contains the Hebrew text of Matthew found in what? Shem Tob's treatise, which is his work. All right, a, criti uh, a critical apparatus, noting manuscript uh, variation. See that? Accompanies the text. 
an English translation appears on facing pages. So we can definitely see his work, ladies and gentlemen. Even down here, I'll tell you part two, it contains an analyst of Shem Tobes Hebraic Matthew, including what is placed within the traditional Hebraic and Aramaic Matthew tradition in a literary textual and theological profile. So we be, we will be able to see this and remember what we had just saw. Uh, let me zoom out real quick. Uh, here, Shem Tob, uh Hebrew Matthew. We can see here that his work there is what? Page 1 to 151. Now, for those who have the PDF version, if you just go to page 54 um, in the Hebrew version, page 54 is not the same as the page numbers. Page 54 will be here, which is if you have the actual book, um, this one here, ladies and gents, it won't be page 54, okay? It will be page 92, 93. Matter of fact, let me show you real quick. Page 92 and 93 of Matthew 19. See that? That's what we're about to go over. So, but before we do, I want to show you something real quick. All right. So, also, you can even type in keywords. So, let's just say Jesus, right? And over here to tell you every time where that word Jesus is mentioned. See that? See in yellow highlight there? Let's just say if I want to type in the word Father. Right in the PDF version, boom. Right, let's see if I want to type in the word um, original. Look at that, see that the word original. Anytime that word is mentioned, what about the word better way? Oh, the word better is there, but not the word better way. Now, remember what that text said earlier. So we don't even see the word better there, right? What about the word one flesh? You see that right in Matthew 19. Remember on the PDF version, that would be page 54, ladies and gentlemen. So page 54, we definitely see that, ladies and gents. I just want to point that out there to make this easier for you. Okay. All right. So. One last time before we dive to this, if you're looking on the PDF version in order to see what I'm seeing, you have to find page 54. And when you click on the side, I mean, when you click on the side of the PDF version, it will show you the Hebrew version of Shem Tob and the English version of George Howard. Work. At the bottom of page 92 of the, of the book, as you see here on the screen, ladies and gentlemen, right here on the bottom of the screen. All right that right there because you don't know what i'm talking about now if you're looking here at the bottom of page 92 of that book that i have here you see notes that was left for um minor changes that was made to the text and you can compare it with the hebrew text you can see any changes that was made and guess what, guys? It was still left for us to view it. Think of it like you changing a password to your phone, right? And you have the first enter in your old password. That would be this in the notes. This would be equivalent to the old password. All right. So think of it as they left the old password and they left the new password, which would be the Hebraic text we're going to go over. Um, and they left it for us to see the future generations. This is exactly what the case is here for us as the reader. We can see the before and the after translations, and we can see if we are being lied to when they say, well, when they teach that false doctrine. All right. So for example, in the notes, right? You see the word et, which is a direct object marker. All right. The word Adam, let soul, which means a man to leave. All right. We see the word Lensoto, 
attempt aka test and we see the object marker that being said ladies and gentlemen we know if we are being lied to when we see um well we had uh three here we go in verse three the at which is the object marker right at adam man plus the word leave right to test them or to try them so we see these words in the text we can see this here in an extended version you will learn all of these things remember this is just a summary of what you will learn in the text but look guys it has notes that we can go over and we can do a compare and contrast ladies and gentlemen now before we do let's go back real quick let me zoom out when we pull page 54 up remember what we saw earlier ladies and gentlemen let me go back and share my screen real quick remember we saw this earlier ladies and gentlemen let's see if we first we'll see the english side if we see that remember here in verse 3 it says and he answered and said unto him and some nations one man have many wives and put it away whom he will or just cause that's what this is right and it says and some women have many husbands and put it away whom she will for a just cause and in others one man is joined to one woman in mutual love and this is the first and better in the better way so i'm going to tell you what i had put in my book ladies and gentlemen about this remember this is just a snippet remember that some of this in matthew 19 and some of this isn't um I mean, some of this is in matthew 19 and some isn't also please note that even by them giving this passage it still makes them look bad because number one this is made up verse this made up verse makes no sense because for the one question was um um for one the question was asked about divorce and you who believe in christ brought up polydynamics from other nations it says and some nations one have many wives now today we call it polygyny right of course and they divorce whether i mean whichever wife he wanted to for a righteous reason that's what we learn in this so-called fake verse this person who you think is christ that's speaking in this so-called matthew 19 he also said in some nations women have many husbands seriously like are we serious what reason is christ even speaking on polandry in the first place whether you believe in poly or not no man in the bible was a part of a polandrous dynamic which is a woman having more than one husband so this is our look this so-called verse is already a red flag it says some nations women have had many husbands which is of course as we know is in direct violation of leviticus chapter 20 and verse 10 deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 22 and if you believe in what we call the new testament romans chapter 7 verse 2 and 3 uh first corinthians chapter 7 verse 39 this is disgusting might i add and here it is who you believe to be christ in this verse he didn't even rebuke either he didn't even rebuke it so whether you are pro poly or pro monogamy or pro both in this text if having more than one wife is wrong he didn't even rebuke either one so if you say poly is a sin based upon this text or trying to imply it based upon this text he is he is he's actually acknowledging what everybody in the world is doing and yet he isn't saying that either is a sin nor is he saying that they shouldn't do it he even said the women who had many husbands also would put away her husband for a just cause that's what he said however again that is in direct violation of the scriptures such as mark chapter 10 verse 12 which is one 
of the scriptures might I add, when Christ was speaking. So how can a woman have many husbands in polandry and put him away for a righteous cause? Because when the Bible refers to Palang because the Bible refers to Palangia is what we call today adultery. So this can't be Christ speaking at all. This can't be real, just based off that alone. Then it says, and others, meaning what? Other nations. This person is saying that one man is joined to one woman in mutual love. So based upon this text, guys, this man who you think is Christ is speaking in this so-called verse is saying, look, some nations, men have more than one wife and they divorce for good reasons. And in some nations, women have more than one husband. They have more than one husband. And they also divorce with good reason. And in other nations, you had neither monogamy or polandry, but you have monogamous dynamics. And this is the original way. And this is the perfect. And this way is perfect in the eyes of the Lord. It didn't rebuke either, though. It didn't say it was sin. It just says that this is the original and perfect way. It didn't say that the other way was wrong. It didn't say either one of those ways was wrong. Any one of these ways is wrong. It just says one is better than the other and one is more perfect. Didn't say you couldn't do it. Didn't say you shouldn't do it. Or the other nations were going to be judged for doing this. Just let you know, look. The one man, one woman was way better even though the other nations may have other partners. More than one wife or more than one husband. It don't matter. This is the English take on that. But the best is yet to come, especially if you get the uh, um, the book. But the argument about Matthew 19, dealing with this so-called mistranslation from the Hebrew version of the New Testament, that false doctrine is about to come to an end. But let's continue in this fake book that was copied and plagiarized from the Bible. So, okay, so verse four says this, but have you not read? That God who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this cause shall a man leave a man or a woman, leave father and her uh, father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife and her husband, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. But therefore God have joined together, let not man part asunder. Now we see where they have pleasurized some of the works of the Bible and added uh things that isn't even in the original text, whether it be Greek or Hebrew. Since the claim is the text is in the Hebrew, all right, well, then we're going to check the Hebrew and we're going to verify if it is or if it's not. All right, so, Habesor, Hakadosha, Alpi, Matai, Perek, 19. So, we have the Holy Gospel or the Good and Holy News according to the mouth of the account of Matthew. Perek, which is a chapter 19. That's where we at, ladies and gentlemen. So, we're going to go back and forth, ladies and gentlemen. So, we have here, I won't read fast. It says, Vayilchu uh, Akharai. Vayilchu Akharai. Letting us know. And they followed after him. Chamon. Am Rav. Who? Many or lots of the people. Vayir Pa'im. Sham and he Rapa healed them. So he healed them there, in other words. Now we have verse 3. It says, Vayik Shu alive. Vayik Shu alive. And they approach unto him. Bahu. They are here. Ha, which means the Purushim. Ha Purushim. The Pharisee, Lena Soto, to try him or to test him. The Yomro, to say. Hayukal can ish a man, the Shalach, sent away a divorce at Ishto, his wife. I'll call the Var for any reason, for anything, by all means. Can they just divorce their wife for anything, ladies and gentlemen? Is what we get now. So we have, and they approach to him, and who the Pharisees approached to him to try him, saying, 
Can a man divorce or send away his wife for by all means or by anything? Can he just do that? Now let's see what the Hebrew Matthew says. The other Hebrew Matthew. We can see it right here. Remember, hold on, let me zoom out real quick so you can see. Hold on, wait. I don't know why to zoom out. There we go. See, it's the same page. And we're going to see if it lines up. Let me zoom in. Now remember, um, two. I remember uh, verse two. What is right here? That's what we're going to look at now. This word says what? Same exact thing. Vayilku Akharai. And he followed after him. Hamon is from the other text. This one here says Chavarot or Avot, meaning groups, meaning crowds. Vayiparim, in other words. Remember we learned it earlier? This one is slightly different. But it still means and he healed. Who? Et is a direct, direct object marker. Kulam says he healed them all. So in other words, and many crowds followed after him, and he healed them all. Basically, what we get there. All right. But he shoot alive, and they approached unto him at Hafarshim, the Pharisees, then assault to test them. This word here. This just says and he asked them. Anybody know about the uh, name uh, Saul? Shaul? That means a petition to ask. There's a root word right there. And he asked them, saying, Im Mutar. If it is allowed the Azul to leave at Lehu, he told his wife, the Sum and Nain. Then we have the word Velutin Lach Gat. All this means what? In any situation and give her a divorce, meaning no matter what, can a man divorce his wife? So what we got there, ladies and gentlemen, and the Pharisees came to him and asked him, saying, it is, a, is it allowed to leave his wife and divorce her? Meaning any reason, can you just divorce her? Is that permissible? That's what he asked him. So notice the anti poly community when they said um that uh that fake verse um when it talked about um and he answered said unto them in some nations one man have many wives uh, away whom he will for a just cause and in some women have many husbands and put her away for whom she wills a just cause and in others one man is joined to one woman in mutual love and this is the original and perfect way of the Lord. That don't say that right here. You don't even see that right here in the English. Oh yeah, and it does say permissible too. Look at that. It does say permissible. So yeah. You don't see that, ladies and gentlemen. You don't see that. That means you've been lied to. Verse four. Here. So you're on. And he answered for him them. Hello, Kortam. Did you not read? Let U Shehem, the makers, Tamahu, Adam and Eve, Mikdum, Zahar, Unikva, from the beginning, male and female, Bara, he created. In other words, what? He answered them, Didn't you read the makers from the beginning, male and female? He created them. Or when he created them, he made them male and female from the beginning of the creation. That's basically what he's asking. But look, let's continue because they may say, well, we'll try verse five then. And we will eliminate that excuse. Now, Yeshua in the next verse is about to quote who? Adam. He's about to quote Adam here. Watch this, guys. He says what? By your mirror, by your mirror, which means what? Saying, hold on, wait. Why ain't gonna let me do it? Body of man. Ooh, ain't gonna let me do it. Hold on, let me zoom in. Hold on, wait. It's a little weird for me. It ain't gonna let me do it. This right here, Vario Mero, saying, 
Alcane meaning so. I don't know why they let me do that. But anyway, and he said so, or he meaning Adam, or he's saying um, therefore for this reason, in other words, yeah, azul. So we're for leave ish. So a man leave at Avi his father, the at Imo and his mother, the Ravach and stick the isto with his wife or glue with his wife, the hive. And they become, or they will become, the Basar Echad. They will become one flesh. They'll become one body. That's what it's saying there, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, a man will leave his father and his mother and will be united to his wife, and they will become one body. That's basically what he's asking there. That's the question that he's asking. The next verse, and I have I guess I have to read this one too because they'll say, Oh, well, you know, maybe you won't see that in the in the next verse so we have the word ich anim shanim ki'im basar akad uma shikvar havura ein adam yuchal or yachul leferid so ladies and gentlemen the first part there so they're not both or two they will have the word the words ki'im which means but but other stuff in my way but they are but what? Bas uh, basara, echad. They're one flesh or one body. Uma and what? Shavar in this word, avra. The created, what he assembled together, what he had joined together. Ain that's the word for not. Adam, no man. You uh, yakul can. The read separate. Why didn't we read this false scripture? They say it's in the Hebrew New Testament. That's what they say. Looks like we haven't seen it though, have we? We haven't seen it. So when we look here in verse six, so they're not both but one body. And what the creator have brought together. No man can separate. So look, even though it's technically already been disproven about that fake passage, I want to keep the translation on Matthew 19 so we can get the understanding of the text. Yeah, you know what? What I want to do is um, I want to go back to the other version of the Hebrew New Testament. But before I do, notice here. Look here in English. It doesn't say any of that. It don't say any of that. See that? It don't say any of that. But yet they sit and make this up. We have been lied to, ladies and gentlemen. Let me reshare my screen real quick. Let me reshare my screen. We've been lied to. We've been lied to. So, and he followed after them, right? Many of the people. And he healed them there. And the Pharisees approached him to tempt him or to test him, saying, Can a man divorce his wife for any old thing, any old reason? Can he just do that? Now, remember, they did this to, to try him. To catch him up. That's why they did this. They wanted to catch him up. They know that there ain't a scripture in the Torah that say that you can do that. So they was already on nonsense with this anyway in the first place. That's the key thing to understand. All right. So going here, we have but your on but your mirror alay him. Hello, Keratim. Ki Merosh Hayotzer Zahar Un Keva Ra Otam. And he answered and said unto them, Did you not read Ki Merosh? Because in the beginning, we see the word Rosh, which means the head or top, negative word of the creation, male and female. He created them. 
especially what he's saying ladies and gentlemen and he answered said unto them hello did you not read or didn't you read from the beginning of creation male and female he created them it's a question that he's asking did you not read that verse 5 but look notice we haven't read none of that in the Hebrew New Testament we've been lied to ladies and gentlemen we've been lied to but you mirror al king and he said so or therefore ya azav ish will a man leave et avi his father the et imo and his mother vedavach and what and unite a cleave stick glue be ishto with his wife there are you and will become Shanaim, and they will become what the basarakad one body one flesh one body one flesh where is that fake so-called gospel at because we don't see it we don't see it at all we don't see it because again, ladies and gentlemen, we've been lied to. We've been lied to. The proof on them is to show that we're wrong and they won't. In King. And now, old. Shanai. However, they are no more too. Ki'im. Basar. Echad. Lachin, because the flesh or the body is one for you, in other words, or they are one. So we have Et Asher and Ber Elohim. I first heard what God have joined together. Al Yafred Adam. Let not man be separated. So, in other words, so they are not both, but one body. And what the Creator brought together, don't let nobody separate. Don't let no man separate. Or, but one flesh or one body and what the creator have company or assembled together. Don't let no man divide. Don't let them separate. Here. In verse 7. But you mirror alive. Velama. Ze. Zeva. Moshe. Letet. Latet. La. Sefir. Kir. Tut. Ul shal ha, ladies and gentlemen. And they say unto them, Why is that? Moses command what? To give her a writing of, I'm sorry, a writing or a bill, in other words, a certificate, a writing of certificate, in other words, or a, a writing of divorce. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, a writing of divorce, a bill of divorce. And to send her away or to divorce her. That's what he's saying right there, ladies and gentlemen. This has nothing to do with that nonsense that they have been painting for you. Lying to you, telling you this. We've been lied to. But he met Alehim. And he said unto them, Mivne, because Kishe, uh, that's a word for like hardness. The Vavkim of your hearts, he lachim. He allowed Moses allowed you to divorce, allowed you to. Uh, I'm sorry, allowed you to send her away. Et shanechim u merosh lo haya hadavar kain. Your wives, but from the beginning. That was not the case, in other words. It wasn't so a uh, meaning from the beginning of the matter or the beginning of the situation of divorce. It wasn't the case. Why? Because Adam and Eve never got a divorce, which is what Christ is speaking on. That's what he's saying there. Adam and Eve never got a divorce. Verse 9. The Ani Omer. 
But I say unto you, all right, Ham Shaleach, whosoever shall put away, or divorce, I'm sorry, or send away, et, this is the object mark of who, Ishto, his wife, Shaleach, al davar zanot, with the exception of the reason of what? Fornication, adultery. So, the one who divorces his wife, not because of adultery or prostitution, and he is the caring of another adultery. Then we have here, and the carrier of the divorce, he is an adulterer. So in other words, I say unto you that whosoever divorces his wife, except for when she commits adultery, and whoever marry her which is put away, commits adultery. So you can't just wrongfully divorce your wife and no one can go and marry the woman that was wrongfully divorced is what this is saying. This verse has nothing to do with polygyny at all. And he's not speaking about adding a second wife. The text didn't say something like um, Me Shemusuf Whoever adds Isha Shania A second wife Who no off is an adulterer It didn't say that So those who be saying Oh well you know You can't have more than one wife Well the text didn't say that It's not applying polygyny In any single verse In Matthew 19 3-9 And no time Matthew 19 That the subject of having more than one wife Was looked upon as a sin Frowned upon at no point, at no point in this verse do we see any of that nonsense that they're saying that's there. Now, remember when we looked here um, in the uh, verse, um, um, like you show a lie, how for she and the Pharisees approached him, then I sought to tempt him by your mirror and saying, How you call can ish. Can a man, the shalach, divorce at Ishto, his wife, al call the var for any old reason, for anything, for any and everything? That's the context that's there, ladies and gentlemen. That's the context. So, let me pull this back up real quick, ladies and gentlemen. And I didn't want to give everything away, so I was treading lightly in this video because I have the extended version of this in the actual book, which can be found at propolybook.com when it releases. Definitely get book one. So when they say things like here, and he answered and said to them, In some nations, one have many wives and put it away. Whom he will for a just cause, meaning a righteous cause or a good reason. And in some, a woman have many husbands. That's palandry. And put it the way whom she wants to, or whom she will for a good reason, a righteous reason, an innocent reason, a just cause. And others, others what? Remember, he was talking about uh, different people in um, nations. One man is joined to one woman in mutual love, and this is the first and the better way, or the original way, as we read in some text. But not the Hebrew text that made up text. So when they say, oh, well, you got to go into the Hebrew version of Matthew. Okay. Well, just show us. Just show us. Because we didn't see that. We didn't see that at all. Show us. Seems to me that people are making this up. They're making it up, ladies and gentlemen. They're making it up. Now remember, I'm gonna pull my screen back up. Let me share it. We don't see that here. We don't see that at all. We don't see it. 
in Hebrew or in English. So all those that saying, hey, well, Hebrew New Testament says it. Guess what I call red flag, the lion. Okay, so I really hope you all got a great understanding, ladies and gentlemen. I really do. You can now go get part one of this book that I'm speaking about in this whole entire video. Propolybook.com right now is discounted right now. Propolybook.com, ladies and gentlemen, it takes about two weeks to get to you, ladies and gents. Um, unless you order on a Friday, it could take about 16 days, I want to say. Um, the video that you are watching now, it will definitely most how willing it will be in this one. The second volume. What's we book two? Give you enough time. It, uh, it it give you enough time because by the time I release it, you still be on book one. And just so you know, you can't have one book without the other because I often refer back to both books, and it is a continuation in the chapters. It's one big book. So you can't skip. Sorry, but not sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I definitely set it up that way. You can get these books from propolybook.com, ladies and gents. Hopefully you all do. YouTube.com says Judah the Shooter. Call me Judah the Shooter because I shoot out scriptures. I shoot out information. I'm a straight shooter and I ain't going to cut no corners with you. You can definitely see some debate dialogues um, in this one here. When they ambush me, okay. you pretty much know every single possible meal. Oh yeah, which means your ass is in trouble. You in trouble? Yes, he was in trouble. Uh, you can definitely see the uh, debate here. Matthew nineteen and three says. Funny, we were just talking about that. Let me answer that. I give you guys what I give you. So yeah, we was going in there. If you watch that one, between yeah, more that way. Question in this verse 16, it said, You should not multiply horses. Let's get this. Was talking about a king, Desire, Yahuwah Elohim, and the Lord commanded. Let's look at this word right here. Mm -hmm. That's a command right there, ladies and gentlemen. There's no confusion with that, it's a command. That is also in my book as well. Uh, you know how they say in Genesis chapter 2, um, you know, the Lord commanded one man and one woman. Uh, I talk about that a little here, but I go into great detail in my book. Great detail in my book. Um, let's see, this one here. Can it be blameless, the husband of one? Now, to those of you who are followers of Jesus Christ, to those of you, as the scripture says, that Jesus who is going to make us able ministers of the new testament that's the word able ministers of the new testament okay if you ain't trying to be a minister of the new testament sit your ass down or just sit out in this conversation <laughs> that is all i'm talking about so yeah um we had a debate over if uh having more than one wife was a sin so definitely check that out as well um yeah definitely check these videos out ladies and gentlemen i got more coming most high willing um i give all praise and glory and honor to the most high name is only begotten beloved son uh that being said uh until next time shalom not the last wife i'm the first wife i'm not the last wife i'm the second wife i'm not the last wife i'm the third wife i'm not the last wife i'm the fourth wife i'm not the last wife i'm the fifth wife i'm the last wife and this is our king, king. And, and this, this is, is our husband yay and this is the house of judah Wives have been amazing. Religion is.
years that we're living All of them get my back All of them submissive They're all about sisterhood and family Our family number's 244 And they won't be jealous if I get another wife Together everyone achieves more Matter of fact, she says she feelin' me We well, gotta be down with polygyny It's just me and my kids And all of these moms Ain't got no problems or no drama It's all love in the house of Judah Like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. <laughs>